What's up everybody and welcome to a new type of series that eventually will launch into a podcast. This is StarCast and I am joined here with one other individual, my best friend in the whole entire galaxy, Anthony. Aww, that was so cute. You're welcome. Anyway, so I have a lot of, obviously, videos that talk about explanations and lore and news, but I wanted to make something that's more of a conversation about Star Wars and so we were talking and we came up with the idea to talk about it on a platform that's more discussion based and uh, will be a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll branch into podcasts. Today we honestly don't have time to record a whole one. So we're going to focus on one topic. Yes. Um, a topic that I kind of struggled to make a video on because it's so out of like the realm of normal Star Wars. But I did actually review a part of it and I'm currently editing a video on it. What I'm talking about is Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disney World. Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Disney Florida World. version. Yes. yes. So we have not been to the one in California, full disclosure. We were going to, but then that kind of fell through because, like, you know, I'm impatient and I wanted yeah. to see Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And it's like we live in Orlando, Florida. Yeah. So we might as well wait the month for the one that's going to be right in our backyard instead of the one that's, you know, across the world. You know what? But I wanted to see it first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, I have a Star Wars channel on YouTube. Mm -hmm. When I was 16 years old, I said, I'm going to make a video about Star Wars because I, I like Star Wars. Yes. That's how big of a nerd I am about mm -hmm. it. I mean, look at my videography. Yeah. You're just like, I love that Plo Koon. Let's talk about him. I love him. Plo Koon. I love Plo Koon too. Anyway, so today we're going to review... Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I'm a big theme park guy. I wasn't mm -hmm. until I moved to Florida, but after coming here and doing pretty much all the big major theme park events and theme parks in general here, I'm a pretty big theme park guy. So keep that in mind, obviously, if you live in a smaller city, not in a place that has a plethora of parks everywhere, mm -hmm. world-class parks, this may blow you away. Galaxy's Edge could very well completely blow your socks off or your lightsaber off yeah and you could have just the greatest time in the world yeah i want this to be a completely honest review on the park okay on youtube i have seen <clears throat> two completely different sides of the spectrum you have those individuals that love everything star wars yes and the individuals that hate everything star wars uh -huh. which which are they just scream at you like if you like a thing. <laughs> like I, I said in my I hate video, those people so much. I've did. talked to way too many of them. I I uh, said in my video today that I thought Solo was one of the best Disney Star Wars movies. Uh -huh. And people in the comments are just like so mad at me for saying that. And I'm sorry. It's not even that outlandish of a statement. It's There, there aren't even that many movies to compare it to or to compare it against. It's, you know, it's not perfect, but it's fun. Anyway. On to the park. Yes. Uh, so this is going to be an honest review. Mm -hmm. Full disclosure, I do not drink, so I have walked through the cantina. Yes. But I have not uh, ordered any drinks mm -hmm. at the cantina itself. I just kind of took in the ambiance and stuff. Yes. So uh, neither of us drink, so like that's not really our our uh, go-to. Like We wouldn't have a lot of information on it. If yeah. you want information on the drinks and stuff like that, i definitely check out another video. Mm-hmm. I would say that the cantina looks cool and the design of it is overall cool. Yeah. As well as the park. I can also say, though, it's got a lot of room to improve and grow. For sure. Well, I, I think my biggest criticism of the park so far is that there's really not a whole lot to do there. There's only one ride. There's one functional ride yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. uh, in in December, they're opening up uh, Rise of the Resistance, yeah. which is apparently a really, really, really breathtaking ride, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of been described as like flight of passage if you've been to disney world before yeah it's like you're in a moving cart and it brings you from like screen to screen yeah um but one of my big things for it is it really is based in the sequel trilogy mm -hmm. uh and if you guys don't know star wars galaxy's edge it's considered canon as far as like not specific ongoings in the park, uh -huh. but the park as a whole is like canon and takes place right before the rise of Skywalker, mm -hmm. apparently. So a lot of the stuff that happens there, a lot of the storyline is there, but the storyline repeats itself every single day that you go. Yeah. And it's basically the Kylo Ren, they call him Supreme Leader, mm -hmm. uh, is there and he is looking for the resistance or any signs of the resistance on uh, 
this planet called, I believe, Batu. Batu. Yeah. Sounds but, about right. Yeah. Um, I would say that the designing for the park is pretty cool. It's too spread out, almost. I would think, or I would say that there's not enough. Yeah. You know, I would say that like Star Wars has such an amazing uh, creative visual style to it because there's so much variety, um, which I think is one of the greatest things that we've gotten from like the prequel trilogy is like they, they introduced us to all these amazing planets. And when you go to Galaxy's Edge, I'm not going to say you don't feel like you're in something that's like a Star Wars world. You definitely do. But it's mostly just rocks. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like... The cool stuff is when you walk around and you see, like, the X-Wing and the, the A-Wing and all that stuff. Like, you definitely feel like you're in some sort of, like, you know, resistance base somewhere. But I just think that for a franchise that has such a great visual style throughout the entire series, throughout all of the uh, comic books and everything, it's like, I feel like it's a little bit lackluster. It's bare some, bones. It's, it's very bare bones, and there's a lot of walking in between everything you want to get to, and it's mostly just looking at rocks the entire time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it could definitely improve visually. Uh, I would love it if it's like you could walk through different planets of Star Wars, although I obviously understand why. If they're trying to do this, like, you're immersed in this real-life place in this Star Wars universe, like, I, I understand that whole mindset, but, like... Uh, wouldn't it be cool if you were walking through Star Wars? It's like you walked through like Felucia, yeah, or something like that, or like Mustafar. I, I was thinking you could do that and walk through eras. Yeah, like you would mm -hmm. have a bigger section of the park, and each section of the park would be like a different point in time. Yeah, so that'd be like, cool. It's like you could have like an ancient Jedi temple way mm -hmm. in the back to represent like the old Republic, yeah. and then in the front you build your way. You would like walk from. Uh, you mm -hmm. could do new trilogy in the front. Then you could do original trilogy section yeah. of the park and then like a Clone Wars. And then way in the back, you could have like ancient like civilization stuff. It, it sounds to me that what you're describing is an Epcot, but instead of different countries, it's different times in Star Wars. Yes. I think that would be cool. I yeah. realize that's also a whole lot to ask. It's a ton to ask, especially because it's really just an add-on to a different park. Uh -huh. It's not – it's – in entirely own thing right like it's just part of hollywood studios that being said though um we should kind of explain that for a second yeah so if you want to go about it disney world has four parks it's got magic kingdom epcot animal kingdom and then hollywood studios and galaxy's edge is just this massive addition to hollywood studios but it isn't its own park so if you want to go to galaxy's edge you don't buy a ticket for galaxy's edge you buy a ticket for hollywood studios um and like, it's it's fun because Hollywood Studios is a fun park too. Like, one of my favorite. Yeah, there's there's a lot to do there. That's where they have the Tower of Terror, which is like the worst thing on the planet. I love that. Right? And uh, that's where they have like the Indiana Jones show and the Rock and Roller Coaster. There's a lot of stuff there at Hollywood Studios. So it's like if you're buying a ticket, keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Also, obviously, if they charge the full Disney ticket price yeah. for Galaxy's Edge, I would say it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. Um. But you're also getting a lot of that other stuff, those fun rides that are world class. Yeah. Also, they have like a whole Toy Story park yep. there. It's it's a big amusement park. And um, when you go to Galaxy's Edge, there are more rides you could ride. It's not just that there's one ride in the park. There's only one ride in Galaxy's Edge, which will be two in the, the near future. Um, but I don't know. It's like... I, I think that the park is definitely fun. I had a great time. And also, full disclosure, I've only been once. Um, and the one time, it was mostly just walk around, see the park, and then we went on the one ride. I didn't get the, the opportunity yet to build a lightsaber. I know you did, if you think that uh, that's worth mentioning. That yeah, I, I had a whole video that I'm currently editing mm -hmm. about it because I talk pretty in detail. Uh, yeah. Basically, like, if I think it's worth it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a really cool experience. It's expensive, and yeah. people say it's expensive for Disney, and it's like, yeah, no, I get that, but, like, it's expensive, period. It is. So, I get that I'm at Disney World. I know where I am. Yeah. It's still expensive. <laughs> um, it's $200 for those of you that are wondering, but the lightsaber is high quality, at least the actual hilt itself. The blade yeah. isn't as high of quality. And it's really cool to change out your lightsaber crystal and, like, to change the color of it. And the yeah. ceremony itself is cool. But here's the thing. You only get mm. one crystal. When yeah. you were with me when I bought the kyber crystals, mm -hmm. I thought they were $7 a piece for yeah. the kyber crystal. Mm -hmm. They're $14. 
Yeah, so, so twice I, as much as you thought. Yeah, I bought four of them. I paid like $63. Yeah. Um, I would say that like the thing about the lightsabers being expensive though is it's like if you're the kind of person that's in the market for like a Force FX lightsaber, um, it's not all that much more expensive than a Force FX lightsaber. If, if you're the kind of guy that could comfortably throw away money on one of those, I think you could totally do it in the theme park. And then you get an experience uh, that is way better than a online purchase. You know, That's kind of how I've described it to people yeah. as well. It's like, think of like, you're getting a Force FX lightsaber, you're paying for that, mm -hmm. and then you're paying $25 for the ability to customize that lightsaber and yeah. $25 for the experience. Mm -hmm. And you get a pin. You get a pen? Yeah. I didn't get, know that. So what they wow. do is you, you select what class of lightsaber you want. Yeah. And they have four different classes. Uh, that's like power and control, which mm. is Sith. They have nature. Uh, then they have uh, peace and justice, which is more uh, which is more like the modern Jedi. And then they uh -huh. have protection and defense, which is what I chose. And that's the ancient Jedi. And okay. what you do before you walk in, once you select what type you want... They give you a pin so that the person that gives oh, you the hilt, yeah, they know knows, which one to give. Yeah, you. they know which one to give you, and yeah. they walk around with a carrying like a crate yeah. filled with crystals, uh -huh. and then you pick out your crystal. That's cool. <laughs> it's a cool experience for yeah. sure. I've I've seen the experience online. I've seen like videos that people have put online. But the thing about it too is you have to reserve it. So um the the time that you and I went, like we didn't have time to reserve it. We were just like on a on a whim. On a, a, a mystical whim of adventure, we decided to go to Disney World and check out the park. Um, but it definitely does seem cool to me. And uh, I don't think that the the quality is very much different from a Force uh, FX lightsaber, with the exception of the hilt being much heavier, which makes it feel... And like, better quality. Yeah. I, I mean, like, you could take it apart and put the, the crystal inside of it, which is actually cool, because you do feel like you're building your own lightsaber. For, for sure. It's not like uh, some, like, little you know, toy that just you put batteries inside of. It's uh -huh. like, it, it feels like you actually have to build it. But um, And then that moment where yeah. everybody turns it all on in mm -hmm. that room, it's really, really, really cool. Yeah, it looks cool. Uh, I think another thing we should uh, mention uh, briefly is just like, it's fun when you walk around the park when you see the stormtroopers walking around the park. I feel like there there needs to be more There needs them. to. That's exactly what I was just going to say. Because it's like we ran into two of them. The, I've gone four times, and mm -hmm. I've run into Stormtroopers twice. You've gone twice. four times? I've gone four times. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> I've seen Rey once, yeah. and I've seen the Stormtroopers twice. Wow. I have not seen Kylo Ren yet. I want to. Apparently, yeah. there's a show where he walks out of that shuttle. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, that shuttle is actually originally from Colin Trevorrow's Episode Nine. He designed that shuttle oh, wow. originally. Mm -hmm. So we don't know if it's going to be in The Rise of Skywalker, but that's a design that he made. Oh, that's cool. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I would say that that's important to mention is uh, everything there looks like it's from the movies. It's yeah. so amazing. And they have a, a life-sized Millennium Falcon mm -hmm. uh, that when you look at it, it's just like the coolest thing on the planet. You really feel like you're staring at the real-life spaceship. Speaking uh, of uh, the Millennium Falcon, what mm -hmm. did you think of Smuggler's Run? Oh, um, I would like to say in the line for that, I was kind of bored and just like... I, I don't know what we're getting into, um, you know, but it's just kind of like a long way. And it happens in amusement parks all the time. It's nothing against the ride. And then there's a moment when you're walking through that line where you're actually walking through the hallways of the Millennium Falcon. And I, I damn near crapped myself. It was just like the coolest, <laughs> coolest, most like screen accurate It looks thing. so spot on. It looks exactly like it does in the movies. And it's it's... It's an experience that I didn't even know I was going to get. I had no idea it was even like that. And the coolest part about it, too, is like when you get to the, the front of the line, right before you go on the ride, they let you walk around a little bit in the Falcon without having to be in a line. They yeah, give they you give a you card. These cards. And then they call you by your card. So, like, you have a little bit of freedom, too, to like explore like the whole like cabin area of the Millennium Falcon where like the chessboard is. Chessboard, not chessboard. Um, and it was just like way more fun than I ever expect. That was m the most fun I had on that ride. Yeah, absolutely. Because, Me too. Yeah. The ride itself is so disappointing. So disappointing. I think the, the worst part about the ride is you have to rely on the people around you, yeah. which could be frustrating. I think the ride is still pretty fun. Um, I'm, it's utterly, just, I'm utterly unimpressed for a Disney World yeah, ride. Yeah, it's nowhere near like the, the Avatar ride in Magic Kingdom where it's like you feel like you're 
Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom, did I say magic? Um, that ride is awesome. Yeah. Uh, what is that one called again? Flight of Passage. Flight of Passage. That ride is amazing. World class. It is like you you put on like a, a headset and uh, wait, is there a headset? It's yeah. just glasses. Yeah, it's, you you wear glasses and it's like you you, sit you on like strap a onto thing. this like bike that's supposed to be like the the birds things in Avatar. What are they called? I don't. Even I know. have no. I'm a Star point, Wars. Point fan. is, when when you're on that thing, you're staring at a screen that's like ten IMAX screens put together. You, and, you feel like you were there. Yeah. And the smell, they blow smell and air yeah, in it's, your face. It's crazy. It's like doing drugs but a ride. <laughs> and then when you go into the the Millennium Falcon ride, the Smuggler's Run. It's so disappointing. Yeah. You're sitting in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, which is kind of that's fun. That's really cool. But like the actual but thing you're itself. You're looking at a screen that's like no bigger <laughs> than your TV at home, basically. I mean, there's a few of them because it's the windows of the Millennium Falcon. Um but it's not it's not like the most fun I've ever had on a ride. Definitely, if you are a giant Star Wars nerd and you think that it you would need to be a pilot. You don't, need to be a pilot. An engine yeah. there so if you don't know how it works, there's two people in each position, three mm-hmm. positions, so six people per cockpit. Yeah. Essentially, you have two pilots, two gunners, and two engineers. Yeah. The pilots actually press buttons and you get to push the lever to go to light speed. Yeah. The gunners just press a button that shoots. Mm-hmm. They don't even like aim. Yeah, you can't even aim. And the engineers also just press buttons. Yeah, and the idea is that if you want the ship to be in functional condition, if you're like an engineer, you press the buttons when it tells you to, and that means you're fixing the spaceship. Yeah. Which is like, so it means you're sitting in the back watching the screen, and then occasionally a green button will light up to your side, and then you just have to press it. And it's like, it's, it's just not that entertaining. No, not at all. I'm, Nowhere near as entertaining as just walking through the Millennium Falcon. No, I completely agree with mm-hmm. you. Uh, what did you think about the gift shop? Where when I went, oh yeah, there was actually a line to get into the gift shop because it's not a big shop. Yeah, uh, it's super cool. They have a lot of amazingly awesome like prop things and uh, like I, I we got to hold like. Luke's lightsaber hilt and it, it looks, looks so good. It's dead on to like the movie, and they have like tons of lightsabers. They have stuff. like they had the Jedi Temple Guard mm-hmm. lightsabers. Yeah, and also these are all for purchase too. It's like, but they have like they have them all on display, uh, and you could get them with blades as well. Um, I think they're one hundred and fifty dollars to one hundred and like seventy dollars. Yeah, so it's like if if you can't go to the park and reserve the. Uh, a uh, lightsaber building thing, but I you also, still want a lightsaber, you yeah. could just go into there and buy one of those. And Absolutely. They have, I think, like, it, it's cool to see the hilts from the movie, you know? And to hold it. I also mm-hmm. just want to say real quick about the reservation thing. Yeah. You can check with them if you're there and see if they have reservations open. Oh, okay. Because cool. a lot of times they do. Yeah. Most of the time they do. In fact, when I went to build my lightsaber, mm-hmm. uh, I checked to see, like, just checking in, like, hey, I'm here. This is the time I'm just double checking with you because if you if you don't know if you miss the appointment they charge you. Oh, they do. Yes. Um, but anyway, the guy that was there, the gentleman that was there, said that there was an appointment for right then because yeah. it was open. So mm-hmm. it, not all hope is lost. Yeah. Especially now, I would say, because the park is so slow right now um, because we're in the slow season. September yeah. is super mm-hmm. slow. Yeah. It'll pick back up again in December, which is why they're unveiling the ride in December. Yeah. And it makes sense to uh, build this whole park and not build that ride immediately. Mm Because it's like you could capitalize on the excitement twice, uh, which is a great idea. But um, is there anything else we haven't talked about? I have tried. Maybe we should talk about the the blue milk and the green milk. (laughs) I have tried all of the food there. Have you? I have purchased it all, yes. Wow. Um, and I can say that the one – they are building a sit-down restaurant currently actually, which That's I'm pretty cool. excited for. Uh, I really love the blue and the green milk. It is not worth $8. It is expensive for sure. Um, I guess if you're, if our opinions mean anything to you, I would just say I'm a blue milk kind of guy. And I'm and a you're, green milk. And you're a green milk kind of guy. As far as taste. Uh, I do not like the green milk in The Last Jedi. <laughs> How Luke gets it. See – I I just don't like a lot of The Last Jedi. I don't hate it, though. I don't hate it with all my heart because I just do not have the time and patience to hate a movie for no reason. Um, that being said, not my favorite. 
Uh, what, what's kind of cool about the milks is a few little facts is mm. there's no artificial coloring. That there's is cool. There's no dairy products in it. That blows my mind. And uh, it tastes really good. Both yeah. of them are really good. That, how do they not have dairy products? I'm, I, I, they're all like uh, plant-based. Oh, okay. So they, I would say they're genuinely refreshing. Yeah, for sure. But also they're pretty small too. Yeah, they're small. They like, give you like the cups, uh, like see the cup that you have in the movie, cut it in half mm-hmm. and then shrink it. <laughs> <laughs> and then shrink it. Use some pin particles. Um, it, the cup is small. It goes by, uh, the drink goes down in like a second because it's, it's not a lot. It costs $7, it's, it's $8. Eight, it's like eight bucks. Eight bucks. And they also have it uh, with alcohol. You could get it with like, I guess a like a, a shot of white rum then or something like in there. Then it's like $15, I think. Which is it's crazy. And uh, you're not going to get drunk on that. So if, if you want to <laughs> go to Galaxy's Edge and get turns, I'd recommend doing it in the cantina and not with the blue milk. <laughs> um, that being said, I also have not been in the cantina. so. And I, and I don't drink, so it's yeah. like, why? I'm just saying, like, don't waste your time and money. Yeah. You're going to spend $400 to get turned on blue milk? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, so, so if we're looking at the full experience of Galaxy's Edge, yeah. if you wanted to do everything, including – you can also build a droid there, by the way, for $100. Yeah, the little uh, like the little R2-D2 droids that come yeah. in that box. Uh-huh. Yeah, I saw a lot of people walking around with those. So say you wanted the full Star Wars experience mm-hmm. and you weren't going to purchase merchandise. And, that, and by that, I mean you're going to build a droid, you're going to build a lightsaber, and then you're going to try the milk. Yeah. Uh, you're looking at – like four hundred and fifty dollars, four hundred dollars for a full trip to yeah. Galaxy's Edge, mm-hmm. uh, and then if you have more people, obviously you got to add two hundred more dollars on there for every lightsaber that you build. Yeah, and eight dollars for every blue milk. If you're gonna buy crystals, it's gonna be fourteen dollars for every crystal. If you want to buy any sort of merch of any kind, it's all expensive. Um, and I'm gonna say it for a lightsaber, a droid, and the experience. I don't think it's worth five hundred dollars. Yeah. I would say if you are a giant Star Wars fan and you're just in the market for going to a theme park, not specifically a Star Wars theme park, uh, it's probably going to satisfy you. I'd say you'd probably walk out of it pretty happy. Um, If you are a Star Wars fan living in the middle of Nebraska and you don't have a dollar to your name, I wouldn't worry so much about what you're missing out on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think it's like if you like theme parks and you uh, could totally swing it and uh, you You love Star Wars, you're a big Star Wars fan. You want to feel like you're in Star Wars for a day, go for it. Yeah. But also, like, there's, there's more than just that park. So, like, I would say it's a cool add on. To the theme park itself, to the Hollywood Studios uh, part of Disney, I would say as well if it was just that, say it was just Galaxy's Edge was its own park and you had to pay admission just to go to that, I wouldn't necessarily say it was worth it. I agree. Yeah, but uh, I mean, if you're taking in the whole the whole park, yeah, uh, I would say that it probably which is... who wouldn't you know? Yeah, it's, they're all connected. It's all you can I don't think you can spend a whole day at Galaxy's Edge. No, you couldn't. Like from rope drop, which mm-hmm. is like being there till fireworks. Yeah, you. I don't think you could spend a whole day. How long were you and I there the last time? Only like, like two or three two hours. hours right? yeah. Two hours. I do also want to say though that Hollywood Studios has an amazing Star Wars fireworks show to really cap off the end. Yeah, and you know what? There also is another Star Wars ride there. It's just yeah, not Star in Tours. Galaxy's Edge. And you can walk on to Star Tours now. I haven't seen that ride go yeah. over twenty minutes since the Galaxy's Edge is open. Yeah, and that's a fun ride. Mm-hmm. I like I like Star Wars. Yeah. So there's there is actually more Star Wars stuff in the park. The fireworks show is awesome. Uh, it made my friend here the stupendous wave even uh, <laughs> tear up a little bit, <laughs> especially when Darth Vader comes out. I would say that's if if you go to Galaxy's Edge, if you're like a giant Star Wars fan and like this is like one of your bucket list kind of things, you will enjoy it. Y- y- go to the park, have a good time there. Hit Star Star Tours up when you're there too, because it's basically it might as well be in the park, but it's more obviously a ride than it is part of like Star Wars canon. That's why I'm sure they're like it's off to the side. It's off to the side, and it's probably been completely. It's ignored. right outside the gates. It's right much. outside of the gates. But do all of that and cap it off with the Star Wars uh, firework show at the end, and you will walk out a happy camper, guaranteed. Um, it's just like how worth it is it to you? Because we can't tell you. 
For us, Disney World is 30 minutes away. It's not that big of an issue for us to go. Mm-hmm. If you live in Missouri, maybe it's not what you want. But it depends. That's up to your interpretation, audience. <laughs> so overall, uh, taking in grading based off of Orlando theme parks. Orlando theme so parks. So world, world class, not mm-hmm. themed parks in general. Yeah. A letter grade, what do you give Galaxy's Edge? Galaxy's Edge itself? Just the Galaxy's Edge Gal- itself. Okay. Um, I'd give it a solid maybe a B or a C+. Plus. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you include Hollywood Studios, I think it's an A because I think it's it's totally fun. I've had a great time. And then the launch bay where you get to go and like see a lot of the other movie props and stuff. Yeah, for sure. It's it's definitely fun. Just Galaxy's Edge though, there's just not enough to do there for me to say like, oh, like this is a total A plus because literally like you could go there for two hours and do everything. Yeah. So um, it's not a whole lot, but it's definitely still fun. And if you're a Star Wars fan, you will enjoy it. I would agree with you. Uh, C plus for C Galaxy's plus. Edge, A for Hollywood Studios. Yeah. I think that's fair. Uh, well, guys, we hope to record longer versions of these in the future, mm-hmm. like bring back Star Wars podcast where we actually do talk about lore based subjects. Yes. But a lot of people were interested in my thoughts on Galaxy's Edge. Mm-hmm. So I thought that we would deliver them. And it's kind of hard for me just to sit down and spew my thoughts on a theme park into the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Unless we were talking Halloween Horror Nights, because then, then I'm sure I could talk do about it. that for hours. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, guys, please leave a like on this, and when the podcast does eventually materialize, I'd also appreciate your support. That would be great. Thanks so much for watching. May the Force be with you, and have a great day.